Hello and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the second generation AccuSense TVI DVRs by Hike Vision. These particular units have a deep learning algorithm similar to the IP Deep in Mind NVR range. They have deep learning for human and vehicle detection that can be implemented into smart events within the unit. Two of the most popular being line crossing and intrusion detection. Much more stable alarms with less false alarm triggering using the deep learn algorithm. The algorithm has been improved over the first generation. So again, much more accurate alarm triggering and less false alarms. The second generation can usually be indicated by a B, which you'll find on the product label, either on the box or on the uh, bottom of the record itself, as you can see here. I'll lift that up, you should be able to see a B there in brackets underneath the barcode. That indicates it's a second generation unit. Each one of the units in the range can support up to four channels for deep learning, for either line crossing or choosing detection. A couple of really good features in the second generation range of products. One is that each unit will support one channel face detection with linkage action, something we'll look at further in this video. There's also a bespoke firmware available that allows AOC cameras to be connected directly to their actual recorders. If anyone doesn't know what AOC stands for, it stands for audio over coax. We've all seen POC and POC recorders, which is power over coax. We've now got AOC, and AOC recorders. There is a dedicated range of recorders for AOC, which will usually have an S at the end of the model number. This particular firmware allows AOC to be implemented into the AccuSense IDS range of recorders. So not only do you get the benefits of the deep learning smart events technology, you also get the AOC technology as well with this particular firmware which is uh, 4.24.001 and that's available from Dynamic CCTV. It might not come on the units uh, out the box but we can get that over to you as and when required or if you let us know on ordering we'll make sure that firmware's on there when you, you take the unit out of the box. So this is a typical AOC camera. It doesn't look any different to any other camera really. They're identifiable from the model code because they'll always have an S at the very end. That indicates that it's an audio over coax unit. This particular unit will look no different to any other. It'll have BNC connection for your video, power connection, and also a four in one push button there. It will have a built in microphone on it. Move it out of the way, you can just see there at the bottom that's your mic. So, this has got a built in audio. It's transmitted through the video line along with the video and then separated by the recorder what as and when the signals arrive. So, this particular unit here, with it being a HUHI unit, has four local audio inputs they'll be locked to channels one to four and in the menu which again we'll look at later in the video you do have the option of being able to choose between local audio or camera audio depending on how it's connecting so if you're using an AOC camera directly back using the video connection then you can select the camera option rather than the local option but you've still got the option there to use the local audio inputs if we were looking at let's say an eight channel recorder you would still have your four local inputs linked to channels one to four Five, six, seven, and eight inputs can still be used for audio with an AOC camera, but obviously you don't get the local audio because they're always locked to the first four video inputs. So that's the uh, the unit there. So if we just take a look at this promotional document here, we can see the unit's got face detection for one channel. It can detect face up to five meters away, and it can detect up to eight faces in a, a single frame and up within three seconds. It's got the deep learning for human and vehicles, so false alarms are disregarded. Humans and vehicles are captured and treat as a valid alarm. And obviously all linkage action will then kick in. And it's also got the PIR camera linkage as well. If you've seen the, the our Turbo X or Dynamic CCV's Turbo X video with the flashing light and the siren, the AccuCenters actually have integration with these cameras as well. And the flashing light and the siren can be used as part of the linkage action for either the first detection or any of the, the deep learning smart events as well, which again, we'll look at later in this video. Or you can use the PIR and the motion detection together as a double knock, again, within the motion detection for false alarm filtering. I would prefer to use that through the deep learning or face detection because detecting off either a human or a face would, again, make the actual unit a lot more accurate and would eliminate triggering off animals, dogs, cats, foxes, etc., which can sometimes happen with the PIR and the motion detection. So what we're going to do next in this video is we're going to have to look at the local output of this particular camera, local GUI output, and we'll also look at the web front end as well and some of the uh, smart events configuring and also the face detection and how that integrates with the uh, TurboX camera for event triggering and linkage action. Okay, so I'm now at the local GUI of our um, IDS AccuSense recorder. As you can see there, we're using the firmware 4.24001, which is the 
the special AOC audio over coax firmware. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, under the camera menu, if we go down to the video parameters setting, uh, we can see they're obviously wrong camera one. At the bottom we've got an audio source option. On camera inputs one to four, this audio source option will, will give you two options, camera audio or local audio. As we've seen earlier, inputs one to four do have a local audio input on the HUHI recorders at models. So you can choose there whether you want to use the local input, which is locked to camera one, or the camera audio if you were using one of the AOC audio over coax camera models. If you go above input 4 to camera 5 then it, the option is then greyed out and you only get the option to use the camera audio or an AOC unit which obviously will accept on all of its remaining inputs so you could potentially have an audio in input for every single camera input on this particular unit when using AOC cameras. If we click on the system tab at the top we can have a look at the smart events from the smart event tab. What I want to show you from the local GUI is the face detection and then the intrusion and line crossing we can look at from the web front end afterwards. So like I said earlier, it will accept face detection on one of the inputs. So if we select it on camera one and apply it, that then uses up all of the resources for face detection. It also prevents you from using any of the line crossing or intrusion because you can only use one or the other. If you choose to use line crossing and intrusion, then face detection will become unavailable and vice versa. So if I was to go into line crossing and try and enable it and press apply, I would get a message there telling me to turn the facial detection function off. So just to, something to keep in mind there that you can only use one or the other. So that's our face detection there. But like I said earlier, it can detect up to eight faces in a single frame. Got obviously all of the expected linkage action from I'd expect from a DVR for a smart event. We've also got linkage action for your Turbo X camera, which is a handy little feature to have. Like I said earlier, Turbo X have a, a siren and a flashing light and also an alarm output on the actual camera themselves. So we can demo that in a moment, but that again, it adds increased stability to the Turbo X linkage action. You know, and obviously if it's needed to detect human face, and that's going to stabilize the linkage action even further. So if we obviously enable face detection, press apply, go back to our live view. We can see there that we've got a uh, target detection option there. So we can click obviously face detection, which is already enabled. If I step back away from the camera, You step forward again you can see that it's caught me a couple of times as I've stepped away we can obviously click on that link and that'll allow us to play back the actual video clip of me stepping back what it also allows us to do is export the video clip as well if we click on that tab there we can see I've already got a USB flash pen in my recorder so I can click OK and that'll actually back up that particular video event as it's doing now but this is a quite handy feature on the left hand side it's a real-time face capture you can see as and when the faces are detected and it's quite a handy little feature to to have in terms of demonstrating the feature so if i was to just quickly close that back down our real-time alarms in the top right corner will show as well that we've had face capture alarms come through that's the one i've just done there at the top of 12 28 we can also play back the actual triggering from there as well another means of being able to view the incident or the face capture incident so if I close that down, what I'm going to do now is quickly turn the light off. And I will, well, there's a, quite a nasty blurred image of me at the top there. Uh, yeah, it does sometimes capture it at inappropriate times, but obviously that's, again, it's the beauty of the product, I suppose. But if we go back into the linkage action and switch light and sound on for our face detection linkage, I've actually, I'm actually using a Turbo X camera for this uh, video, and go back to live view. When I step back this time, we should get some audible and visual indications. And there you go. So you can see there the, the Turbo X linkage action kicking in when it detected my face. And obviously that is only happening on face detection. So again, the, the double knock scenario of motion detection and PIR functionality for the Turbo X is, it does add, add increased stability, but you can still get the odd nuisance trip if an animal was to walk in front of the field of view. But obviously for face detection, it, it will only trigger when a, a physical person is within the field of view of the actual image. One other thing I quickly want to just show you is the smart analysis tab at the top of the screen there. If we click on that, we do get some um, quick target search options as well uh, for vehicle, human body, and also face search. So if you were to click on the face search option and choose your camera, we choose camera one, which is what we're using. You can then put a particular time period into search and you can also choose your event type. Obviously we're under face search. So if we start the search, this will show us some of the faces that have been captured. 
myself during this video but we can also view the footage from there uh, obviously you've got your, your VCA rule as well which shows you as and when the faces are captured we can play the footage back we can export that particular piece of footage if need be obviously I've already done that earlier so we don't need to do that again you can also select them all if you want to export everything you can also view them in a list view as well as well as a tile view and you've also got the source trigger which actually shows the native image and obviously the the target source as, as and when the face was captured so what we'll do now is we'll move on to the web front end and we'll take a look at just some of the intrusion and line crossing with the deep learning algorithm okay we're now at the web front end of our accusense dvr so i'm just going to quickly log in and we can have a quick look at how to configure the smart events on the system and also set up the deep learning for human detection and go to configuration we can see we've got a tab for event and then smart event here and that gives us our line crossing our choosing detection at the top there the two settings so you select your camera from the list there we can enable the intrusion and line crossing on up to four of the inputs and we're allowed one intrusion rule and one line crossing rule per image so if we leave it on camera one we'll start with intrusion detection so we need to enable it we need to select our detection target here but from between human and vehicles so we'll select humans and we need to draw our intrusion area which I'm going to try and get across the left hand side of our image something like that stop drawing the uh, threshold we've got which is 0 to 2 in seconds and that's how long the person has to be intruding into the area before it registers a trigger so you've only got a short period of time only up to 2 seconds we'll leave that at 1 for the purpose of today's video and there's also a sensitivity which is how fast some body has to move into the detection zone before they register as a trigger so the more sensitive the less percentage of that person has to be inside the zone the less sensitive the more so if we uh, save that you've also got the arming schedule for your linkage action like you have on on any of high vision event if we click on linkage method i'm just going to tick audible warning because that will cause the dvr to give off a beep when i'm moving into the zone and linkage action tends to represent a genuine deep learning human detection or vehicle detection false alarms which are filtered would not perform any linkage action so the next one is line crossing detection and again we want to enable that select it to be for humans and draw the area and I'll try and get that ring bang down the center of my intrusion zone best of my ability Thing like that direction we've got multi-direction set at the moment which will leave it at, but you can also select it to be a objects traveling from a into b or b into a and it's also again a sensitivity like there is on intrusion detection so we'll save that i'm also going to set our linkage actually i've already ticked to audible warning again so that will give off a beep from the dvr which you can hopefully hear as and when it happens one other thing to look at is uh, in local there's a vca rule setting which is here and that's a handy setting which allows us to visually see our VCA if rules on screen and also people and objects uh, being mapped around the image are also uh, highlighted as well with a box around them, a green box. So if we go back to live view, we should be able to see them two detection zones on the live stream. There you go. I'm just going to bring that up full screen. So there's our detection zone. So when I move into that area, and cross the line what we should have is a box and the line should turn red the green box mapping me should turn red and we should also hear a beep from the DVR as well that indicates a genuine triggering of the actual recorder there you go hopefully you all heard that beep as well in the background which was the DVR performing its linkage action so if we go back into the actual menu and the first thing we can do is we can go into system and maintenance and look at the log and we can select alarm and intrusion detection started and search that and there we have our intrusion detection there which I've just triggered already in the log and we can also go into playback now if you go down to storage set to continuous record at the moment if you wanted it to record only when smart event triggers take place you need to remember to select event for the days hours or the whole week if that's how you want it it's quite easily done you can select each day from by clicking on it and choosing your record type 
save that. We get a purple bar for that day. We can also copy that to the rest of the week. And that gives us a full calendar week of event only recording. It's more economic on your hard disk space. Obviously only record as and when a genuine event takes place. Obviously playback would be scattered depending on the events as well as and when they happen. So that's set up your smart events from the AccuSense recorder, human and vehicle detection methods are unique to the IDS AccuSense recorder and obviously give much more stable alarm triggering and a false alarm filtering, which you wouldn't find in other DVRs in the TVI range. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sure you can obviously see this, the uh, advantages and selling points of the AccuSense range of recorders. They're all available at Dynamic CCTV. Any further questions that you might have, technical questions, don't hesitate to contact our technical department or your sales account manager. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more useful videos which are coming all the time. Thanks and bye for now.